When it comes to influential figures in the entertainment industry, Mary Tyler Moore ranks high on the list. Renowned for her talent, charisma, and groundbreaking roles, Moore left an indelible mark on the world of television and film. Despite all this, the personal life of America's favorite was full of difficulties. At a young age, Mary Tyler Moore had to endure sexual abuse, and becoming a famous actress, she could not overcome alcoholism. About these and other fascinating insights from the life of Mary Tyler Moore, I will tell in this video. Welcome to the magazine channel. Hit the subscribe button if you want to know all the secrets of celebrities from the past. When Mary Tyler Moore died in 2017 at age 80, it was too simple to just say that the actress carved a special place in our hearts because, to quote the lyrics from the theme song of her eponymous sitcom, she could turn the world on with her smile. Beyond the on-screen charm, her iconic TV characters on The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Mary Tyler Moore Show helped change the image of the modern American woman. Personal problems haunted the actress since childhood. Born in Brooklyn Heights, New York, Moore and her family moved to Los Angeles in the 1940s when she was eight years old. Her father, George Tyler Moore, a clerk, was emotionally distant and unhappy. Her mother, Marjorie, was an alcoholic. When the actress was a young girl, she claimed an acquaintance named Mr. Archer allegedly abused her, but her mother refused to believe the allegation. I told my mother, groping for words. My mother said, no, that's not true. My mother, by her denial, had abused me. My mother had abused me far more than her friend, Moore wrote. The next day, I marched down the hall to six-year-old David Archer's apartment, feeling a wild unvented anger, and told him exactly what his father had done to me, she continued. On his pale small face I saw the impact I'd hoped for from my mother, felt vindicated, and a little sick at what I had done to him, too. Although this situation was horrible and forever stuck in Moore's mind, it didn't change her desire to become popular. According to Mary, she always needed attention and knew that only Hollywood could give it to her. Moore's first tiny role was, in fact, a big deal. She made her silver screen debut as this tiny dancing elf, Happy Hotpoint. Her character appeared in TV commercials during the 1950s show, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. It obviously wasn't a starring role, but it was a lucrative one that gave Moore an insatiable appetite for the high life. Unlike the thousands of other Hollywood hopefuls, Moore found success right out of the gate. Or so she thought. For just five days of work as Happy High Point, Moore pocketed $6,000. That's more than $73,000 in today's money. However, what happened next proved the old saying true, easy come, easy go. She blew a good thing. A high paying gig wasn't the only thing that Moore landed right out of high school. At just 18 years old, she netted herself another coveted prize, a husband. Her first of three, to be exact. Unfortunately, trying to balance a marriage and a career proved to be harder than she had expected. Something, sadly, had to give. Right out of high school, Moore married the boy next door. Literally. She married her 28-year-old neighbor, Richard Meeker. Far from being an actor, however, Meeker was a cranberry juice salesman. By all accounts, they had a happy marriage at first, but before long, Meeker would leave a sour taste in Moore's mouth and ruin her career. Just six weeks after tying the knot to Meeker, Moore found herself pregnant. As her baby bump grew, she found it increasingly difficult to slip into her sleek costume and hide her pregnancy. Ultimately, Hotpoint made the decision for Moore and fired her from the lucrative gig. At least she had a family to go home to. Moore had to give up the opportunity of a lifetime to have her first and only child, Richard Carlton Meeker Jr. Ritchie, as she liked to call him. Unfortunately, a beautiful baby boy wasn't enough to save her marriage. In 1962, Moore split from Meeker Sr. for 24 years. She would have a beautiful son as a reminder of her first marriage. After the Dick Van Dyke show ended in 1966, Moore had to work hard to reestablish herself as a star. She played second fiddle to Julie Andrews in the 1967 musical film, Thoroughly Modern Millie. Her Broadway play, an adaptation of Breakfast at Tiffany's, was poorly received and closed quickly. She even played a non-opposite Elvis Presley in the 1969 crime-slash-drama-slash-musical, Change of Habit. It wasn't until she reunited with Van Dyke in a 1969 TV variety special that TV honchos at CBS reawakened to her talents and offered her a series. 
Moore, of course, not only starred in the Mary Tyler Moore show, she and her second husband, executive Grant Tinker, helped develop and produce it under their MTM Enterprises studio. Their original pitch, a recently divorced woman living it up on her own. But the powers that be insisted that Moore's character not be a divorcee, lest viewers believe that Laura Petrie had split from Rob. Tinker and Moore broke up in 1981. While the award-winning drama Ordinary People should have been the highlight of her post-Mary Tyler Moore show career, she was nominated for a Best Actress Oscar. Moore suffered an unspeakable tragedy just months after its release. Her son, Richard, died in October 1980 from what was later ruled an accidental gunshot wound. During filming, she was also dealing with her divorce from Tinker and the recent death of her sister from a drug overdose. In the 80s, Moore admitted to having a drinking problem that had started when she was starring in The Dick Van Dyke Show. She entered the Betty Ford Center for treatment in 1984. Feeling she was too good for lowly tasks of cleaning and following rules, she got a taxi and headed to a hotel nearby. The following morning, the former first lady herself called Moore and encouraged her to come back. She did. It is worth noting that much help in the fight against alcoholism, as well as diabetes, which was diagnosed in the actress back in 1969, she was given her third husband, Dr. Robert Levine. In the final act of her life, Moore and Levine uprooted from NYC to a farm in upstate New York. We tried to find a place away from the city where we could enjoy the outdoors, Levine explains. This is where she could find her peace. The pair later moved to Connecticut. However, he reveals that even in her downtime, Moore rarely enjoyed basking in her iconic work. I had to push her to watch, so I mostly did it on my own, he says. She loved Dick and Carl Reiner, and everyone associated with the Mary Tyler Moore show was like family to her, but she liked to look forward. These words can truly be called the creed of Mary Tyler Moore because she strived for fame no matter what. She went through pain, violence, loss, and illness, but still made her mark in Hollywood and was able to find love and a family.